Welcome to our show, Why Did the Soviets Lose the Space Race? Today, we will delve into the fascinating history of the space race and explore the reasons behind the Soviet Union's defeat. Joining us are our esteemed guests who will shed light on this pivotal moment in space exploration history. Let's begin our journey to uncover the factors that shaped the outcome of the space race. First off, let's set the scene. The space race was essentially a battle of technological prowess between the United States and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Dr. Ivanova, could you give us a brief overview of its key milestones? Absolutely, Elena. The space race officially kicked off in 1957 when the Soviet Union successfully launched Sputnik, the world's first artificial satellite. This event shocked the world and particularly the United States, propelling them into action. Following Sputnik, both countries embarked on a series of ambitious projects, with the Soviets achieving several early victories, including the first human in space, Yuri Gagarin, in 1961. However, the tide turned with the United States Apollo 11 mission, which successfully landed astronauts on the moon in 1969. That's right, Natalia. The early Soviet successes were indeed remarkable, and as someone who was part of that era, the sense of achievement and progress was palpable. However, those triumphs masked underlying issues that would later contribute to the Soviet Union's challenges in maintaining its lead in the space race. Interesting point, Yuri. Can you elaborate on what some of those underlying issues were? Sure, Elena. One of the main issues was resource allocation. The Soviet space program faced significant budgetary constraints and was often forced to innovate with less. While this bred a culture of creativity, it also meant that certain projects couldn't reach their full potential due to financial limitations. And adding to Yuri's point, the political climate within the Soviet Union at the time also played a crucial role. The space program was not immune to the political infighting and bureaucratic inefficiencies that plagued the Soviet system. This often led to delays, mismanagement, and even the cancellation of promising projects. It seems like internal challenges were a significant factor. But how about the competition? How did the United States actions impact the trajectory of the space race? Great question, Elena. The United States, realizing it was behind after the initial Soviet successes, poured substantial resources into its space program, including funding, research, and public support. The Apollo program is a prime example of this, representing a massive investment in achieving the goal of landing a man on the moon. This level of support and focus was something the Soviet Union struggled to match over time. To add to that, the United States also benefited from a considerable degree of international collaboration. NASA worked closely with scientists and space agencies from other countries, which amplified their capabilities. The Soviet Union, on the other hand, was more isolated, relying primarily on its own resources and expertise. So it sounds like a combination of internal challenges and strategic differences in approach played a pivotal role in the outcome of the space race. Exactly, Elena. And it's important to highlight the technological setbacks that the Soviet Union faced. Failures in rocket design were a significant issue. The N-1 rocket, which was supposed to carry Soviet cosmonauts to the moon, is a prime example. Its development was plagued by reliability problems that led to four unsuccessful launch attempts. Indeed, the N-1 rocket's failures were a hard blow to our lunar ambitions. But it wasn't just rocket design. The life support systems on some of our crafts also had issues, impacting the safety and well-being of cosmonauts on missions. These technological challenges were symptomatic of the broader problems we faced, including a lack of access to certain advanced materials and technologies due to the isolation you mentioned, Natalia. That's a critical point, Yuri. The technological aspect is often overshadowed by the political and economic discussions, but it's clear that these setbacks directly influenced the course of the space race. Absolutely, and it's worth noting that the Soviet Union did make some critical advancements in space technology despite these challenges. The design of the Soyuz spacecraft, which is still in use today, was a significant achievement. 
However, the inability to consistently innovate and execute more complex missions like those required for a manned moon landing underscored the limitations of the Soviet space program. Yes, the Soyuz is a testament to Soviet ingenuity. However, as missions grew more complex, the earlier strategy of pioneering quick successes no longer sufficed. The race to the moon required not just bravery and ingenuity, but also sustained technological development and international collaboration, areas where the United States had an edge. It's fascinating how these elements intertwined, influencing the outcome of the space race. From what you both say, it seems like a multifaceted issue rather than a single failing on the part of the Soviet Union. Precisely, Elena. The space race was not just a competition of technology or willpower, but a complex interplay of political, economic, and social factors. Understanding this helps appreciate the achievements and challenges of both the Soviet and American space programs beyond the simplistic narrative of winners and losers. Another aspect we haven't discussed much is the role of international perception. The U.S. Apollo moon landing was not just a technological triumph, but a huge propaganda win that showcased American resolve and capability to the entire world. This event significantly shifted global opinion in favor of the U.S. during the Cold War era, making it harder for the Soviet Union to claim leadership in space exploration. That's an interesting angle, Yuri. The global reaction to the Apollo moon landing indeed underscored the importance of public perception and its impact on the space race. Would you say that the Soviet Union underestimated this aspect? It's possible, Elena. The Soviet Union did score early victories, like the launch of Sputnik and Yuri Gagarin's historic flight, which had significant global impacts. However, over time, the American space program's achievements, culminating in the moon landing, began to overshadow Soviet accomplishments. The inability to manage and leverage these perceptions internationally might have contributed to the perception of the Soviet Union falling behind in the space race. And let's not forget the internal perception within the Soviet Union itself. The failures and accidents, some of which were deadly, began to erode the public's confidence in the space program. This was in stark contrast to the early days of the space race, where every launch and mission was celebrated as a national triumph. That shift in public opinion must have been challenging. How important do you think internal support and public confidence were in sustaining the space effort? They were crucial, Elena. Public support translates into political and financial backing. In democratic societies, sustained public interest and belief in the program's value can influence budget allocations and policy decisions. For the Soviet Union, Maintaining a positive image of the space program was essential for its continuation, but as challenges mounted, that support began to waver. In the end, it was a confluence of factors, technological setbacks, political maneuvers, and the battle for hearts and minds both at home and abroad. Each of these elements played a part in shaping the final outcome of the space race. Fascinating insights. Let's pivot slightly and talk about the lack of coordination within the Soviet space program. How significant was this issue, and could overcoming it have changed the outcome of the space race? The fragmentation within the Soviet space program was not just significant. It was one of the critical factors that impeded its progress. The program was split between various competing agencies and design bureaus, each with its own agendas and priorities. This rivalry led to duplication of efforts, wastage of resources, and sometimes even sabotage of competing projects, which ultimately slowed down the pace of Soviet advancements. Indeed, Dr. Ivanova. From an insider's perspective, the lack of coordination was palpable. There were instances when we as astronauts were caught in the crossfire of bureaucratic battles, unsure of which directives to prioritize. The competition wasn't just with the Americans, it was within our own ranks. That internal competition sounds like it was quite detrimental. Was there ever an attempt to unify these competing factions within the space program? Attempts were made, but they often fell short due to the strong personalities and vested interests involved. Sergei Korolev, the chief architect of the Soviet space program, 
managed to keep these factions somewhat aligned until his untimely death in 1966. After that, the feuds became more pronounced, further hampering the program's effectiveness. Korolev's death was indeed a turning point. He had a vision that went beyond individual ambitions, aiming for the collective success of the program. His absence left a void that was difficult to fill, exacerbating the existing issues of coordination. It's clear, then, that leadership and vision were also key components in this intricate puzzle. Would stronger leadership have mitigated some of these internal conflicts and perhaps altered the trajectory of the Soviet space program? Potentially, yes. Strong, unifying leadership could have streamlined efforts, minimized wasteful competition, and focused the program's goals. The United States had its own challenges, but managed to consolidate its space program under NASA, providing a clearer direction and better resource allocation. A similar approach in the Soviet Union might have made a significant difference. Absolutely, Dr. Ivanova. The will and resources were there, but without cohesive leadership and vision, these efforts often became mired in bureaucracy and infighting, diluting the program's overall effectiveness and ultimately contributing to its shortcomings in the space race. Moving on to another critical aspect, the brain drain. How significant was the defection of scientists and engineers to the West in terms of impacting the Soviet space program's progress? The impact was considerable. The Soviet Union lost a number of its brightest minds to the West during the space race period, which translated into a direct loss of expertise and innovation. These defections not only depleted the country's intellectual reservoir, but also emboldened Western programs with fresh insights and methodologies. I remember the atmosphere of paranoia that ensued. The defections heightened security measures within the program, leading to a culture of suspicion. This, in turn, stifled creative thinking and collaboration as people became more guarded and less inclined to share ideas. It seems like a vicious cycle, loss of talent leading to increased restrictions, further impacting innovation. Were there specific incidents or defections that, that particularly resonated within the space community at the time? Certainly. One of the most notable was the defection of Mstislav Keldish's nephew, a prominent mathematician closely associated with the space program. Though not directly involved in space missions, his defection in the 1960s symbolized the potential reach of Western influence and served as a stark reminder of the vulnerabilities within the Soviet scientific community. The Keldish incident was a shock to all of us. It underscored the fact that the challenges we faced were not just technological or financial, but also deeply personal and ideological. The battle for minds was as intense as the race to space. These ideological battles must have added another layer of complexity to an already intricate situation. With such external pressures and internal strife, it's a testament to the dedication of the Soviet space program's personnel that they achieved so much. Absolutely, Elena. Despite these adversities, the program made groundbreaking achievements, launching the first human into space, the first spacewalk, and numerous scientific milestones. Their contributions to space exploration remain undeniable and continue to inspire advancements in the field today. However, we cannot overlook the focus on military applications as a significant factor. The emphasis on developing weapons technology rather than civilian space exploration arguably diverted resources and attention from projects that could have achieved more firsts or even breakthroughs in space science. Yuri, you've hit on a crucial point there. The militarization of the space program not only altered the course of its developments, but likely also influenced international perceptions and the dynamics of the space race. The drive to showcase military prowess through space achievements undoubtedly had an impact on the strategic decisions made at the time. That's an interesting perspective. Could this focus on military applications potentially have sty-faced innovation in other areas of space exploration? We know that during the space race, the narrative often prioritized beating the other side to a milestone rather than the broader scientific knowledge that could be gained. Certainly, Elena. 
While the military applications led to advancements in rocket technology and satellite capabilities, it's conceivable that a more balanced approach, one that equally valued civilian scientific endeavors, might have fostered a richer environment for innovation. The competition was fierce, but the potential for cooperation and shared scientific exploration was largely overshadowed by geopolitical concerns. Indeed, the global context of the Cold War heavily influenced the motivations behind the space race. While the Soviet program initially led with spectacular firsts, the narrative shifted when the U.S. landed astronauts on the moon. This event was not just a technical achievement, but also a powerful symbol of technological and ideological leadership. It seems the space race was as much about political ideologies and global leadership as it was about the technical challenges of space exploration. The focus on military prowess and the subsequent ideological battles defined much of the era's space efforts. And yet, despite the competition, the space race era paved the way for international cooperation in space exploration, such as the Apollo-Soyuz test project. It's a reminder that while competition can drive innovation, collaboration can achieve wonders that benefit all of humanity. Absolutely, Yuri. The lessons learned from this period are invaluable. They highlight not only the pitfalls of prioritizing military and geopolitical concerns over scientific exploration and cooperation, but also the incredible achievements that can result from dedicated teams working towards a common goal, despite the odds. This brings us to the inefficiency of the bureaucracy within the Soviet Union. How significant was the impact of bureaucratic red tape and delays in decision-making on the Soviet space program's ability to compete effectively? The impact was substantial. The centralized system of planning and control while offering certain advantages in terms of resource allocation and prioritization, also introduced significant inefficiencies. Decisions had to navigate through multiple layers of bureaucracy, which not only slowed down the process, but sometimes led to conflicting directives that hindered progress. I can attest to that. In my time, I saw brilliant engineers and scientists becoming frustrated with the endless loop of approvals and revisions, it wasn't just about the time wasted. It was the dampening of innovative spirits. When your boldest ideas get bogged down in administrative quagmires, it's not just efficiency that suffers. Creativity does too. So the bureaucratic system essentially acted as a double-edged sword. On one hand, it could orchestrate large-scale projects by funneling resources efficiently, but on the other, it stifled innovation and delayed decision-making. Precisely, Elena. And in a race where timing was everything, those delays could mean the difference between being a trailblazer or playing catch-up. The American space program, with its more decentralized approach, allowed for a degree of flexibility and rapid adaptation that the Soviet system struggled to match. That flexibility was key, especially in resolving unforeseen challenges. In space exploration, the ability to quickly adapt and make decisions can be a matter of life and death. The rigid structure of the Soviet system didn't always afford that nimbleness. And let's not forget the impact on international perception. The inefficiencies within the Soviet bureaucracy weren't just internal problems. They affected how the rest of the world viewed the Soviet Union's technological and scientific capabilities. In the eyes of many, each delay and each failure diminished the image of Soviet superiority in space. It seems like the bureaucratic system, with its complex web of control and decision-making, was a significant Achilles heel for the Soviet space program. The challenges posed by this system highlight the importance of organizational structure and management in pioneering efforts like space exploration. Absolutely. And moving to our topic on the lack of international cooperation, this too played a crucial role. My experience taught me that space exploration is not just about one country's triumph, but humanity's collective advance into the unknown. The Soviets' hesitation to collaborate internationally only isolated its efforts and knowledge, limiting the potential for growth and shared success. Indeed, Yuri. The reluctance to engage in international partnerships was, in part, a byproduct of the Cold War mentality, 
where sharing knowledge was seen as a potential security risk. However, this approach failed to recognize the exponential benefits of pooling resources, information, and expertise, which the Americans capitalized on through collaborations like the Apollo-Soyuz test project. That's an interesting point. The Apollo-Soyuz test project in 1975 symbolized a thaw in space race tensions and showed the world what was possible when two superpowers worked together. Would you say that this event marked a turning point in how the Soviet Union viewed international cooperation in space exploration? It certainly did, Elena, but unfortunately, it was a realization that came too late in the game. The spirit of collaboration that marked the later years of the space race hinted at what could have been achieved had there been a willingness to cooperate sooner. The isolationist stance in the early years was a missed opportunity for the Soviet space program. And let's not overlook the benefits of such cooperation beyond the technological achievements. Collaborative international projects in space exploration serve as powerful symbols of peace and unity, bridging political and cultural divides. The International Space Station is a prime example of this, where former rivals now work side by side. It's clear then, the combination of bureaucratic inefficiencies and a lack of international cooperation significantly hampered the Soviet Union's efforts in the space race. The importance of organizational adaptability and international collaboration are lessons that continue to resonate in today's space endeavors. Absolutely, Elena. As we look to future missions to Mars and beyond, these lessons remind us that space exploration at its best is a collaborative, international effort that transcends individual ambitions for the greater benefit of humanity. Well said, Yuri. The legacy of the space race, with all its triumphs and shortcomings, continues to guide current and future generations in their quest to explore the final frontier. The spirit of cooperation, innovation, and perseverance remains as relevant today as it was during the height of the space race. Thank you, Dr. Ivanova and Yuri, for such an insightful discussion. It's clear that the space race, while a competition at its heart, taught us invaluable lessons about the power of collaboration and the need for efficient, flexible approaches to tackling the unknown. As we continue to reach for the stars, these lessons will undoubtedly light our way. Thank you to our listeners for joining us on this journey through history and into the future of space exploration.